Now you're living again. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Hello, folks. Welcome to another edition of Firing Line Radio Show. This is Philip Naiman. I hope you're having a great day. I hope that uh, we're going to start off this year pretty darn well. So the first several shows this year, I want to focus on how to make your life, your shooting life, your Second Amendment life, and just everything in general better. So we started last year, January, or last year, we started last week with our show for the first of the year with uh, George Willoughby and clean up on aisle N109 in the San Bernardino National Forest. I think that getting involved with a group like that, that's going to go out there and do some stuff is absolutely a great way to start off 2022. And just in case you forgot about it or didn't hear about it or thought you were going to get away with not getting out there and cleaning up, January 22nd on the turnout for N109 off Highway 330 in the San Bernardino National Forest, there's going to be a great group of people out there doing cleanup. They're doing the cleanup for all the lazy, disgusting slobs who should be in jail that like to go out and shoot toilets and television sets and leave the crap on the ground. That's absolutely infuriating for all of us responsible gun owners, and these guys are taking it on their own to go out and fix this. So hats off to those guys. You can find out more. They uh, don't have a website, but they're on Facebook. Their Facebook page is D14 Zone. D14 is the local hunting zone in California for the area that they're actually talking about. So D14 Zone on Facebook. They're posting a lot about it. We're posting up there too. So all you have to do is show up. Uh, Eight o'clock in the morning, Highway 330, the turn off to N109, um, you know, bring some donuts, be a star. Things to bring out there, you're going to want to have gloves, probably some like Home Depot style buckets. I would consider snow shovels, not for the snow, but when you have to pick up brass off the ground, uh, raking it into a pile and a snow shovel is a great way to go just to get the debris off the ground. Do that uh, yard rakes, either the wide fan or the like a lawn rake for heavier stuff, because there's going to be, again, a lot of debris. Uh, if you have shop magnets on a rope, those are great for picking up pieces of steel very, very easily. And so the more you can do not bending over and picking through the dirt with your hands, I think you're going to be better off. So shop magnets, rakes, snow shovels, buckets, really the best way to go. And to make sure that you bring your own food, water, you know, be self-contained on that and send us a lot of photographs on that. So we'd love to love to get you credit for what you do. That's number one. Number two in case you've been under a rock like Joe Biden uh, for the last couple of years, you've realized that we have a very serious problem when it comes to finding ammunition. And Gavin Newsom and Jerry Brown and Kamala Harris have done their best to make sure it's almost impossible in California, meaning that they shut down all internet sales. You can't order it from out of state and have it shipped unless you jump through certain hoops. And Sean will talk about that, but you can't just, just order stuff offline and have it sent to you any longer. Um, that's forced people into trying to do whatever they can to find ammunition. And it's also stopped a lot of people from shooting. I know I've seen attendances at uh, some of the matches are down. Guys just don't want to go out and shoot a lot of ammunition because the expense of replacing it or the difficulty in finding ammunition to replace it, or a combination of both. So a lot of things are happening on that, on our Second Amendment. We're feeling pressures that are uh, stopping people from shooting, stopping them from practicing, and we need to continue to shoot, continue to practice to get better at what we do. And that's why Sean Gibbs, he's the owner of Ask Firearms in, in Redlands on Colton Avenue, is here today. We're going to talk about another way you can make your life better, and that's with reloading. Not the Matrix Reloaded reloading so it's much better than that sean how are you doing this morning we're doing great beautiful day in california as always yeah actually we're this show i'm uh, phoning in um we have a few bugs apparently we need to still work out but we're working from the prescott office right now we're setting up an office for my my business my cornerstone christian wealth management we're going to set an office up out here so we're out here doing the legwork um, this is one of the offices we have and uh, the internet we're getting our own lines installed this afternoon, but as we're recording this morning, we're just dealing with what we're, we're dealing with now. So if there's a few sketches on there, just realize it's a work in progress, as all of my technical endeavors are simply a work in progress. I never quite get it figured out. <laughs> it's all, 
It's always I, the story. Yeah, I'm in the uh, I'm in the thumbs club, the old man bums club when it comes to technology. So yeah, anyway, I, I'm I I rely on the younger guys that are more tech savvy. If they have a hoop in their necks from looking down all the time, that's the guy you want working on your stuff. <laughs> you stand up straight, you don't know how it works. So that's a pretty good thing there. Okay, so you heard the your intro here. Um, give us a little bit of background on your shooting experience, reloading experience, Sean. Um, I've been shooting since I was five. That's when I got my first rifle. Um, my dad was always a reloader. So he always had a press and I was on the second stool next to him. I've been pulling the handle for almost as many years as I've been around. Um, and it's not the one that's runs out jackpots and, and ching, 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 ching. It's a different ching, but nowadays that, that could come out to being whether you can shoot or not shoot because ammo these days is not so easy to find. Mind you, some of the componentry is difficult as well. Not impossible, but difficult. But it can sure free up uh, the fact of whether you want to go out and shoot or not. Um, and the cost factor is considerably less. And you're in control. I mean, whether you go in the garage for an hour and reload a thousand rounds or you shop around and try to find a thousand rounds, it, that can make a big difference. You know, the other part of that, you know, so my next show next week, I'm going to talk about setting up 2022 and, you know, life goals and hunting and shooting and all those other great things that you want to do and how it all starts with planning things up front. Um, but we all have the same 24 hours in your day. You have 24 hours. I have 24 hours. Sometimes it seems like I only have 18, but we all have the same amount of time. So how we choose to spend the time. And that's really one of the only decisions we have in our life is how we choose to spend our time determines a lot of things. Some guys it's like, Oh, I can't go outside and load a thousand rounds of nine millimeter, you know, maybe with a, with some of the presses we'll talk about that doesn't take that long, but I can't go do that. That's going to take three hours, but they watched four football games on Sunday. Yeah. You know, I so, know it's it, have a customer that comes in all the time that says, Oh, you must have one of those boxes that are called a TV set. <laughs> it, it's a joke because they spend their time watching TV rather than, and he spends his time in the garage tinkering and, and making ammo and doing other things. So it's, yeah. all, it's all what you want to do in life. Yeah, and it's important. Now, when it comes to reloading, for those who have no idea what we're talking about, um, reloading means you either get brand new components, the components existing of a bullet or projectile. The entire cartridge is not called a bullet, just the part that flies through the air is with the greatest of ease is the bullet. The bullet is yeah. propelled by powder, which goes inside the cartridge case. And the back of that, there's a little round thing called the primer, which ignites it all. And I'll let Tom, uh, Sean go in and with a little bit more uh, detail on that as far as how it all comes together. But um, those, are, those are the basic parts of it. And we're talking about either getting brand new components, putting them together for the first time, or if you've gone shooting and you've had some, uh, you've had some brass and you pick it up on the ground. Now, what do you do with it? So uh, Sean, walk us through the process for the very first all brand new components style reloading. Well, we'll go with pistol. Let's just go with nine millimeter single stage pistol. Okay. Um, so basically, you've got four components that you got to acquire. You need to get brass. You're going to need primers. The brass powder. is the cartridge, right? Right. That, that is the hole in which everything is put into and holds it all together. Um, and then you're going to need a projectile. Um, single stage reloading is you do one step at a time with typical new brass. I always recommend that you run it through the sizer just to take any deformities out from being shipped in the bag and the case mouse get kinked in and it's just makes your life a little easier. 
you're running. Uh, so let's talk. Let, yeah, let's talk about that. So you're talking about when you first buy brand new brass, you're thinking, oh, it's perfect. So oftentimes I like to use a shell, um, a case holder where I'll sort my brass. I'll put it in there upside down. And so you can see down the inside and you'll see that not every cartridge you get brand new is perfectly round. They've been dented. No. You know, the UPS guy throws them off the back of the truck. Um, so if they're not perfectly round, it can cause you problems in other stages. So inspecting it is a good idea. Uh, Sean, we're going to take a break right here. Folks, this is Philip Naiman, right. Firing Line Radio Show. We'll be right back after this. Come learn how to reload and reset your life. <laughs> 2022. We'll be right back. So clever. All right, you ready? Keep rolling. Yep. All right, here we go. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. See this? This is my boomstick. Hey, folks, welcome back to Boomstick Radio. This is Philip Naiman, Firing Line Radio Show. And you know, every week we're going to come to you, brought to you by Bullseye Sports Guns and Ammo in Riverside. Between Brockton, no, I always say that wrong, gosh darn it, between Central and Arlington off of Brockton in, in near downtown Riverside. Uh, go see Vince. He's got some great stuff out there. He's always giving you guys some good deals. So if you have not got your firearm of the month yet, hear me. California says you can only buy one new firearm a month. Well, don't let january pass without that happening so step on down there to bullseye sports guns and ammo say you want to be a member of the gun of the month club um just grab something off the shelf because you're going to buy another one next month anyway so it doesn't really matter just keep on buy more buy early buy often bullseye sports guns and ammo in riverside 951-823-0211 no vince did not approve that ad uh folks joining me back here i have sean gibbs sean is the owner of ask firearms in redlands and we're talking about reloading and sean has been a well, I won't, I won't give your age away. He's been doing this since yeah. he was five. Um, yeah. Let's, let's so. just say the better part of 50 years. <laughs> That'll work. So uh, a lot of experience, a lot of life experience on this. And we're just getting into the stages of reloading. Um, Sean, you actually have classes for people who don't just want to listen to this one podcast and say, okay, great. I'm going to start. Tell us a little bit about your classes. Well, we, we teach three different classes. The first class obviously would be a basic class. It teaches you from square one, what you need. It, it's for the person that hasn't bought anything. It's the, for the person that doesn't know if he wants to reload or she wants to reload. It gives them the steps. We provide all the tools, all the product, everything that you need, you go home with 20 rounds of loaded ammunition that you loaded. It is very informative and, it, and it's a hands-on class. Um, I Nobody that's ever taken my reloading class has ever walked away and said that was a waste of time because 99% of the time they now have a skill they didn't have when they started. It, it It's a great class. So reloading is not difficult. And I say this because I've done it a lot. And if it was difficult, I wouldn't because that's the way I'm wired. So it's not difficult. And once you get over the hurdle of not knowing what to do, it's really, you know, it's a good way to pass time. I'll listen to podcasts, um, YouTube channels, something like that going on in the background. And I'm just, just reloading and you kind of get into a flow of what you're doing. Um, so let's, we we're talking about the very beginning stage. You just got your brass. You're going to we're talking about nine millimeter single stage reloading, kind of the most basic thing for pistol. What are your other steps, Sean? So once once you get your brass prepped, um, the first stage is you're gonna have to take and put a primer into the case. Once you get the case primed, now you have a vessel in which that you can put powder in. So you need to take and- How does, how does a primer happen? Um, primer is, inserted into the back of the case with a tool that is pressed in using the press. 
instead of pushing up, you're pushing down. Basically. So there's a couple of different ways you can put a primer in a case. You most of the single stage presses like a rock trucker rcbs is a manufacturer rock trucker is a big giant press that i've had for almost as long as sean's been reloading um they don't wear out thousands of rounds tens of hundreds of years of use they don't wear out there the, yeah they're the most solid pieces of equipment i've ever seen it's like a john deere tractor from 1955 but um you can either use this press with a little attachment on it, or you can use a handheld device. And on a handheld yeah. device, you, like something called a Lee, uh, Auto, Lee Auto Prime. That's yeah, the, the old never. one that I have, but there's lots of them out there and they seem to be, to me, a little faster way of doing it, yeah, a little bit more control on how you seed it. So I prefer a handheld unit when I'm doing my priming. Yeah. It it all depends on how much equipment somebody has, but once you get the primer into the case, then 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 you're going to work on powder. Um, you're going to need to take and figure out the powder weight. And how do we do that? We we have what we call loading data, which is basically a cookbook. It gives you all the information, and you follow this information, not necessarily verbatim, like the, the difference between metallic cartridge reloading and shotgun reloading is, shotgun reloading is like baking a cake. You use exactly what the recipe says, otherwise it may not come out the way you want it to. Uh, metallic cartridge reloading, we have a window in which that we can work with powder. It gives you a high and it gives you a low. Book always tells you, you wanna start with the low and you never wanna start with the max. So I usually- Unless you're pressed somewhere. for time. <laughs> uh, what's that? Unless you're pressed for time. <laughs> well, the, the Jeff, that's a joke. These are the jokes, folks. These are the jokes. But long story short, you, Always stay air on the side of caution when it comes to powder. Right now, powder equals pressure. powder is pressure. And so, so on powder, this is not black powder. This is not explosive powder. Will it burn? Yes, but you have to apply a lot of heat to it to get it to burn. Does it explode when it burns? No, it flames up. It's it's well, it, if you it burns and creates gas. Right, and and gas what makes the bullet go down the barrel. Uh, right. But so and it's measured it's, it's it's measured mostly by volume so when you right. are going to do multiple rounds you'll use a th a item called a powder measure where you'll put a pound of powder in this tube and it will give you three or four or five grains out at a time if you're shooting pistol 50 60 100 grains if you're shooting rifle um you know, just whatever it calls for. And once you have it down by volume, the powder measure will give it to you pretty closely. Um, Sean, do you weigh all of your pistol charges like for nine millimeter? No, I use, I run a Dillon machine. Um, once I've set up the Dillon machine and checked it at least 10 times to make sure that the powder that I've set up is actually measuring correctly. I won't check it, but maybe every three or 400 rounds. Right. Um, it, it's very, very difficult. And um, there's also, like you said, there's a, there's a range with powder. Like, let's say that it's nine millimeter and the load calls for a low of four and a high of six, and you're loading four and a half. You know, if it, if it poured in at four and a quarter or four and three quarters, you're really not going to know much of a difference on that. And it's going to be within the safe range. Well, one tenth of a grain up or down is not going to take, you're not going to ever feel it. Right. Um, so, and you're, as long as you're within that safe range, you're, you're fine. It, it, that is the most important thing is you don't run on the high end because then if you go over, you you could have a problem. Right. But, and, um, and problems happen. Uh, I think the most common problem uh, that I have seen in reloading is if somebody does what's called a double charge. So yeah. when you're holding, when you're holding your cases, 
Um, if you're not using an automatic machine like the Dylan that Sean was just talking about, if you're not using an automatic machine for that and you're doing single stages, sometimes you can get a little bit confused and either you skip one um, as you're, you're powdering or one gets double. So when they're back in the tray, I believe it's a good idea to look over them with a with a flashlight and make sure number one, all of them have powder. Number two, that they appear to be the same level because a double yeah. charge could fit in a nine millimeter. You could put 10 grains of powder in there um, if you're not looking, right? So those are just the safety features that they teach you in these classes. That would be basically one of your first things you probably get in your first, uh, your first reloading class, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. We talk about overcharging and it, simple things like paying attention to the charge level in the case and you do the same thing when you're using a progressive machine that's what you're focusing on you're making sure that that powder dump is exactly what it's supposed to be and that's what you focus your 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 viewing on okay. but and then tools that help um determine whether you've got no charge low charge overcharge they call something called a powder cop is something that you could also use that helps you as a tool with the progressive device. Yeah. With okay. Folks, this is Philip Naiman, firing line radio show. Find out more about some of Sean's classes at ask defensive.com. A S K ask defensive.com. They're in Redlands first, second, third Sundays of every month. They have the reloading class from two 30 to six 30. It's a great class. You can learn a lot of information. There's basic, mid-sized and advanced classes. So all everything for everybody. We'll be right back after this. Ready, Dan? You ready? Yep. Here we go. Spartans! Lay down your weapons! Pleasure! Come and get them! Hey folks, welcome back to Firing Line Radio Show. This is Philip Naiman here with Sean Gibbs of Ask Defensive Firearms in Redlands. And we're talking about his reloading classes. But before we talk about that, I want to remind you, January 22nd, you need to get involved uh, on your Facebook page, D14 Zone. These guys are out there. George Willoughby is out there. They're going to be doing a giant cleanup on N109. What is N109? That's the, the designation the Forest Service gives for a major road that goes east to west through our, west to east, I guess, through our entire mountain range in the San Bernardino National Forest. It's important that we keep access to this open. It is important that it stays clean. There are areas you're allowed to shoot up there. We are sending up a groups of people up there to clean up after the pigs, the idiots, the scums, the slobs that shoot televisions, toilets, everything else. So we want to make sure that we are um, taking care of business. And so that's going to be on the 22nd, January 22nd, 8 a.m., go up Highway 330 to the N109 cutoff. I think they have some maps on their Facebook page for... Uh, D14 zone and get involved, be a, be a part of that. That's a, that's a great thing. So we're going to do that. Then on Sundays, the first, second, and third Sunday of the month, if you want to learn more about reloading, go to askdefensive.com as uh, Sean is fighting his iPad over here on the video screen. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Did you have an earthquake? Let's have an earthquake in California. I'm in Arizona right now. So I don't know. Maybe you had an earthquake there. Your, your stuff attacked you. Anyway, um, He's got his reloading classes. If you want to take reloading classes, if you you want to do it, you know you should. There's a lot of money you can save and there's control. And plus, we're, as we're going to get into now, there's different things you can do in reloading that you can't just by buying store-bought ammunition. And that's kind of the fun part. Um, that's more of the art than the science, if you will, in that area. And we're going to talk about that. Anyway, he's got different classes. So if you've never reloaded, the beginners. If you have want some advanced techniques, he's got that. If you want to learn how to run... Um, the automated machines like the Dillon 650, 750, and 1150, and the, the Dillon 4000, um, the DeLorean 88. He's got all of those down there. So check that out. Again, that's at askdefensive.com. Um, 
we're talking about how to do pistol reloading and that's kind of some of the basic stuff. Excuse me. Um, that's some of the basic stuff that we have going on there. But as I was just alluding to, when it comes to long range shooting and getting the most out of a cartridge, bullet, rifle, barrel setup, uh, I think that hand loading is really the way to go. Your thoughts? Um, well, most people that buy a rifle have no idea what the cartridge is actually capable of in that rifle. And no, let's let me let me stop you right. Hold that hold that thought, but this is really important. There's a there's a thing out there called the SAMI. Okay. It's the shooting association, whatever. It's their guideline that when a cartridge is developed, they say these are the pressures you should run. This should be its overall length um, for a 308, for a seven mag, for a 300 wind mag. And the rifle manufacturers or the ammunition manufacturers only load to like sub sub uh, scales uh, of those areas. Why? Because lawyers happen and people get sued and right or wrong. So they say, well, we're not going to give them top performance. You know, a, a seven Remington Magnum can shoot 168 grain bullet, 3,200 feet a second. You go buy your Remington 700 Magnum, 168 grain, put it through a chronograph at the range. It says 2,900 feet a second. What's the difference there? Uh, lawsuits. <laughs> so they're always going to, well, they're, it, they're taking performance just, off the top. Well, it's not just lawsuits. It's like every gun is slightly different. Um, yeah. The, the rifling in the barrel, the length of the barrel, all of this plays into that particular rifle's performance and what reloading does is it gives you it goes back to the science you take your rifle and you figure out what best works in your rifle because there is no one formula that works with all rifles that is the part of reloading and shooting that i've fallen in love with every time i get a new rifle i start this whole new process over again to experiment and find the perfect load that that rifle shoots and it's fun it, it it's not just going out and putting rounds down range and costing huge dollars in ammunition it it's a whole process and for most people that get into it it is so much fun you you lose yourself in it most of the time i mean it's you, you buy a rifle and you buy a box of ammunition and you go, yeah, it shot pretty good. Well, how, how can I make it better? What can I do to make it better? Well, this is how you make it better. You dial in your ammunition so you're not shooting a one MOA group. You're shooting a one quarter MOA group. How do you do that? You have to reload. That is the only way around it. It is... It is the only way to get rounds down range in a pat in a group that will be smaller than factory ammo. So when I was gearing up for my sheep hunt, you know, I obviously I had a, a new barrel put on a, a 270 Ackley was the cartridge I was using. And I got a 1.84 twist barrel, which is a very fast for 270, but that I needed it for the bullets that I chose. I chose the bullet I wanted to shoot at the speed I wanted to shoot and then found the cartridge that would get me there. Um, yeah. Now in my reloading, right, I was getting almost 3,300 feet a second out of that load, but my group was like an inch, inch and a quarter. Now, it, it, some guys are like, oh, it's pretty good. Well, if you're planning on doing long range shooting, that's not that good. So I actually had to tinker. I went down a little bit in my powder charge. I went to about a three quarter of an inch group. And then I went down a little bit more and I found what's called a node and it was shooting sub half inch um, at that speed with a hunting weight rifle, which I was very pleased with. So I'm sub half inch, 3,200 feet a second with 150 grain cutting edge laser bullet. And uh, obviously did the job. The grizzly didn't like it either. So when he got hit, but that's a whole nother show. But um, your powder charges affect a lot of your accuracy. You want to touch on that? Yeah. So as not, you were saying, not, not just uh, consistency, not just consistency in your 
charges, but actually different volumes can cause different things. Well, correct. So that's why we do what we call a ladder. And a ladder is designed to find that node in which velocity doesn't change between two powder chain, two powder amounts. And when you find that node, that's where you want to work in because not only do we have the velocity, Consistency in velocity equals accuracy downrange because that way we can calculate accurately the trajectory of the bullet. But not only do we have that by itself, we have the harmonics in the barrel. That is where it goes to bullet depth, how, how long we leave the bullet, how short we, we seat it because that changes when the bullet leaves the barrel and in what position the barrel is, is in, in the harmonics, how it antiquates downrange. Um, there's a, it's a lot to go over in a few minutes on a radio show. It is something that requires much more time. The Actually, theory behind it is right. you Actually, if you go... If you go to one of our classes with Rex Defense, remember Rex Tibor, we've done a bunch of classes with him. Uh, yeah, you're going to get two days of barrel harmonics and how this works. And uh, it is it is pretty technical. I just wanted to bring up the point that your different powder charges can charge can change your point of impact and change your group density, meaning you're shooting great, you added half a grain of powder, you're shooting terrible. Um, it just changes the harmonics, the vibration in the barrel. And sometimes the, what I have learned is that the fastest load I can get may not be the most accurate. It might be great if I'm only planning on shooting two or 300 yards, like with a 375 H and H, uh, Ackley improved. But if I want to have a firearm that's capable of a thousand plus, then I need, I would be much better off with a more accurate bullet, with a high BC, more accurate bullet at a slower velocity, not a lot slower, not like 500 feet a second slower, maybe 50 to 80 feet a second slower till I find the next node than I would be to try and push the velocity. That's been my experience. Velocity, always everything. It, it, it is something, but it's more important to be consistent in your velocity than it is to be the fastest. Um, right. And then, then you know, that's, you a, that's a good discussion, point. we're going to pick it up here. We have to run back to another, uh, another commercial. Um, you know, those commercial people, they like to get paid. I don't know, but folks go to our sponsors here. And anyway, what you're going to see is there's a trade-off. We want to talk about that. When we come back between the velocity and what your purpose for shooting that is. If it's target is one thing, hunting something else, we'll, we'll be right back after this. For instance, um, when we come back, you know, if you're, if you have a, let's just pick on seven mag, if you have a seven mag and your 168 um, bullet shoots really, really great, like one whole groups at 2,400 feet a second, uh, right? big deal. <laughs> it's not a good hunting rifle, you know, well, and, no, and it's it, going well, so. We have, we, we have issues nowadays with the bullets won't open up if they're not a certain velocity. Yeah, the so, monoliths. Yeah. That's why I gotta switch to cutting the, edge. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. 27 one shot kills. No, I'm not I'm not debating on on any of that. I'm not gonna promote one bullet over the other, but but there is a huge thing, and half the manufacturers don't tell you the truth with when their bullets actually open up. Yeah, they the all say, thing, oh, they open up down to well, you know, um, I've had in my life hunting experience i've had ballistic tips open up too much um not sure. penetrated and, three uh, times this is the most bizarre thing because i had read about it and people told me that it happens i'm like baloney i'm going three thirty two hundred feet a second what do you mean it's not going to penetrate so uh two pig hunts in california i was using the long range acubond and I hit one, uh, I think it was a sow. It's like a 250 pound sow. I hit her at 200 yards, it was going left to right, killed her. You know, one shot, she was dead. Um, and then another one, I was following up a guy who wounded one and I shot it at 40 yards and he died. When we went to clean them, 
as you open up the chest cavity, there was no right. entrance wound into the chest cavity. There was like a six inch splash wound on the shoulder where they got hit. The animals right. died of a heart attack. There's the hydrostatic shock killed the animal, but the bullet never no, penetrated right. the chest cavity. And I'm telling you, I would, if, if I heard this on a radio show, I'd say that guy is smoking crack. Well, but, no, I have, I have somebody that bought a rifle from me, bought ammo from me. He's a good shooter. Put two shots in the shoulder of an elk within an inch of one another. Didn't make it through the shoulder. And what bullet, bullet was that? Yeah. yeah, so bullet, yeah. when it comes to hunting, you know, obviously you want the most accurate, but when it comes to hunting, there's a lot of factors in there to get the right bullet on that. Okay, I think we're ready oh, to come oh. back here. Go ahead. What? Okay. Yes! Great hunter. Yes? yes. Fine figure of a man. Yes? Yes? Yes. That is all you need to know for now. Sorry about that clip, guys. My wife makes me play that all the time. I don't know why. Just uh, it sets her in the right mood, I guess. And that could be it. And you know, I'm popping off because she doesn't listen to the show. Anyway, Philip Naiman, Firing Line Radio Show. Welcome back here. I have Sean Gibbs. Sean Gibbs is the owner of Ask Defensive Firearms. We're talking about reloading, talking about precision. And now we've gotten back into one of my favorite topics, long range. Um, long range hunting, long range precision. One of the things that I, I talked about as we just went off the air is there has to be a balance between, well, number one, what are we trying to do? If all we want to do is shoot extremely fantastic groups and accuracy is our game, then velocity doesn't matter much as long as you can judge the wind correctly. So like F-class shooting, you don't need a lot of velocity for that. You've got a giant, heavy, monstrous gun, and you're just, <laughs> say it again, you be cons consistent. You have to be consistent. Right. Yeah. So the F-class guys, they're just going to be looking at the wind. And when it's all the same, they send as many rounds as they can before the wind changes. <laughs> Right. That's, that's that's what their game is. F class is just think of a giant 25, 30 pound rifle that that sits on a bench and is um, aimed by dials on the table <laughs> to hold it in place. F class, they're, you know, they're usually a little bit more intuitive, but some, yeah, some, I've seen some that are like, wow, it's almost like precision artillery. It's great stuff. I, I, I love that. I love the fact that they've come to that level where they can shoot such amazing groups. The other side, um, if you're doing something like long range shooting, like ELR, precision well, what's bolt gun. precision bolt gun, um, extended long range shooting? Well, there, the, the consistency of your ballistic uh, coefficient on your bullet is extremely important because there's some, again, if you're in the Rex classes, some really weird things happen when you go through the sonic barrier twice, once out the barrel, twice as it slows down and different things happen to different um, bullets on the second time it passes through that transonic range. And that's, so that causes a whole nother choice of, of bullets and that hunting hunting is depends on the game you're hunting you want to have penetration you want to have expansion you need a, a blend of both and to do that sometimes you'll need more velocity than people think and sean you wanted to talk about that a little bit well yes um all manufacturers especially nowadays especially if you're hunting in california we are required to use copper bullets or non-lead bullets. These bullets don't work the same as our old lead bullets did. They, they don't open up as easily as the lead bullets did. They don't expand very well. And it, most cases requires a certain amount of velocity to make that occur. Um, and yeah, as- one of the, There's so, one, of the, one of the more popular uh, all copper bullets out there they always like to show this star pattern. It looks like a starfish, like the bullet goes through and it's a perfect star pattern every single time. Um, that doesn't work real well on game because as the bullet stays together, it tends to penetrate through the animal without spending all of its terminal energy in the animal. 
And that's been the major problem I've had with those bullets. That's why I don't use them. But um, like, I, you know, the design that you're talking about now, the cutting edge bullets, they have the front end will come off and actually cause dramatic damage and still have a hard solid core similar to the nozzle partition, but it's all copper that drives all the way through. So you get the best of both worlds on that. And, but you do right. have to be cognizant. If you're going to be looking at extended ranges, the velocity of your bullet at that range and the energy left on that bullet at, at that range. Yeah. You have, you basically design your cartridge that you're going to use for that hunt based upon the parameters in which you're going to be shooting. If you're going to be shooting 100 yards, it doesn't really matter. But if you're going to be taking your game at seven or 800 yards, you got to make sure the velocity of the bullet is going to be terminal for the game in which, so you make a good humane kill. I mean, and that is just straight up math. And, and it's, it's really yeah. important that you understand the, the size difference, a deer versus an elk. Matter of fact, is we're moving some, some of the game heads. And I took my elk off the wall. And I have a nil guy um, that I shot in Texas and we're moving him too. And so laying on the floor, I have the, the antlers are off the elk, but just the head and chest and versus the head and chest of this other animal. Now the nil guy weighed 450 pounds. This elk just dwarfs him. I mean, the size difference between a deer and an elk is, is you won't, if you've never shot one before, you won't get it until you get up there and grab a leg and try and move one on the ground. They are five times the size of a deer. Okay. And you're not going to be able to manhandle them. And what that means is that your 25 aught six or your 243 or six Creedmoor, which just is an amazing um, deer rifle, uh, may not have the poop it needs to get through in a, a giant bull elk. And we are all about humane harvesting. We want the animal to go from this life to the next as quickly as possible. So he doesn't even know what happened, right? That's, that's the goal on hunting for us. So matching your bullet with your energy and with your, with the game is extremely important. Yeah, there is no one cartridge that works for everything that well the 300 we, rum is pretty darn close i gotta tell you that is the that will do it all yeah. <laughs> there's there's not many single cartridges that will take well my my thing that i always say is is at six has the most variety of choices of loads for one given caliber, it will do a pretty good job most of the time. But that that's just an old school way of thinking, I guess. But um, it, it, it comes down to you need to take and prepare for whatever hunt you're gonna make and make sure that the cartridge that you're going to use will do the job efficiently. And yeah. you can that better by hand loads most of the time. You, you will. And the other part, I saw just somebody sent me this other, a lot of times these, these riders, you know, they get on a bandwagon on whoever their advertisers are or whatever, whoever took them to a hunting ranch in, in Texas, their newest best whiz bang thing they always want to talk about. But they were comparing the 30 odd six to, I think it was a six, five Creedmoor and saying that the Creedmoor just out performs it all the way around, but they did some dirty things in the analysis. Number one, they took 150 grain, um, 30 caliber full metal jacket bullet with a BC of like a 286, meaning it gets very low gas mileage and compared it to 147 grain Hornaday ELD in the, uh, in the six, five, you know, it's, there are other bullets they could have chosen. They could have chosen 168 grain Sierra that has a BC in the fives. And then all of a sudden the comparison comes off the charts, you know? So yeah. when you're reading magazines, realize the magazines are there to sell you a product. They might have some facts in it. They may not. Your best bet is to talk to somebody who knows like Sean or, you know, people with life experience. <laughs> life experience. Yeah. And, and that's, that's where you're going to get that. There's nothing wrong with a 30 odd six. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a video on 30 odd six, which is not my favorite cartridge, but just because 
there are so many good aspects about it that people talk down on because they're looking at, at the, well, the Sammy spec says this, well, that doesn't mean anything. If your overall length for a 300 wind mag is supposed to be 2.6 inches, but the new bullets are at 3.6 inches, um, you can adjust your magazine length. It's, you can do this, right? There's, there's ways to improve your performance. You don't have to go out and buy a brand new rifle. Well, you guys sell guns, but there's ways to make everything you've had work better if you understand this. And that's what you learn in a class, like your advanced reloading classes. Yeah. You get into I the mean, cartridge there's, design. There's a reason why I'm building a 30 out six Ackley. That's a great card. Man, you know, I'm glad you oh. brought that up. So a 30 out six Ackley folks takes a 30 out six, takes the worst aspects of it, throws it out the window and makes it one of the most um, efficient cartridges out there that give yeah. you the performance of a 300 Winchester Magnum without the blast and the powder burn. It's a great cartridge. Yeah. Okay. 230 grain Projos downrange. I mean, it, it does a fantastic job. So uh, you're shooting 230 grain projectiles out of a 30 out six Ackley at what? 27, 2650. Uh, yeah. In that ballpark. Yeah, so 2,700 feet a second, 230 grain bullet. That's the, the Creed more speed with a more effective bullet and 230 grains. So you're, you're looking at 50% more mass and, and uh, energy at the end. Remember when you, when you talk about bullet weight, it's like the train going down the tracks. The heavier the load, the harder it is to slow that bullet down. So it just keeps, the bigger the bullet, the longer and the more energy it's going to travel with downrange right. bigger is better you heard it here first folks folks philip name and firing line radio show i want to thank sean gibbs from ask defensive firearms go to askdefensive.com get the reloading classes you guys have a great year we'll see you all next week take care everybody god bless all righty 230 grains uh that's that's you like those heavy ones. I like the 190s and 30 caliber. That to me, for hunting purposes, is like the well, sweet spot. That's not a hunting rifle for me. That is nope, another long range gun. And and that BC on the 230s is just phenomenal. Was it eight? Is it in the eights? High sevens. High sevens. Yeah, it's eight. I mean, it's it's like at this point, I'm not sure what my next rifle is going to be. I, I've been kicking it around for a 408 Shytac, but so um, I don't want to build a 50 because that's just like. Yeah, when are you going to use it? You you, yeah. I mean, you have to take it out to have a suit just to have a just to let it stretch its legs. I, I, I'm looking I, at the same thing. I've got um, I've got a root was it Ruger? No, Savage Savage 110 action. It's all done, and. I've got my 22 Creedmoor, which is just in a, two of those are amazing. The six Creedmoor is amazing. 25 odd six, 270 Ackleys, seven STW, six, five STW, six, five, two eighty fours. Um, and then on the, on the high end, I've got the 300 rum and I'm like, right. Where? And I have a 375 uh, lever actions too, but the 375 H and H Ackley improved. And it's like, I love building guns. I like designing things, but I'm like, oh, and plus my 270, 300 wind mag. That's, that's a freaking awesome cartridge. Um, it's like, well, look at my watch. Where, 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 where do I go from here? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm looking at, so, it, looking at the, the golf club case, right? I've got, I even have a one iron. <laughs> <laughs> what, what am I going to do with this? I, yeah. I love making yeah. them because it's exciting and it's fun. And like you said, working up the ladders and seeing what the cartridges can do. It's like, okay, I think. One, I, I will say I, I've been playing with it a little bit. I don't know whether you're into the AR platforms at all, but that six arc. My yeah, God, I saw that. Fantastic. That's, that's what, a great idea. Yeah. I, it has got follow-up accuracy like none other as far as making multiple shots on multiple targets quickly it it is very manageable cartridge and 
It sounds like you hit it with a 308 when you hit steel with that cartridge, even though it's only a 108 grain bullet. It's got some energy behind it. You know, it's funny when you talk about the like the military style machines. The military is stuck on 30 caliber. The military is stuck on uh, 22 caliber. And you know, if you had like a AR-10 and say 243 with the 108s. Dude, that would just be a scary gun. You could shoot a thousand yards. You could shoot as easy as you could with a 223 because you're not killing yourself with big old recoil. It's a little bit lighter. The ammo's lighter for uh, than an AR-10. Yeah. The six arc, you know, that's another. That's a great cartridge that just came out. Um, and and uh, the other thing I was like on the uh, on the high ends as far as their sniper rifles, they're stuck on 30 calibers. It's like well. If you're going to do 30 caliber, give yourself a, give yourself a one and eight twist barrel, right? And then shoot the two thirties. Don't be stuck with the one sixty eights Cause that's what we had in NOM. You know, there, right. there's so many new things are happening. Um, you know, you look at the sevens, the two eighty fours. there, there's some great bullets in seven millimeter, um, that, that would outperform in that same weight category. much. Sorry, I never have explored the seven millimeter scene much. I only but, shoot. But I shot it. I shot a seven seven millimeter weight. I took a, a nice bull, a buck in Mexico with that. But um, seven STW is is that is a king cartridge. That one is just unbelievable. And the seven mag, you know, if you go any higher, like a seven rum, you're just in my opinion, you're getting a little bit more blast than you are getting performance. Seven rum is amazing, but the difference between a seven STW and a seven rum are they're pretty close. And I would rather have the STW. It's like the 300 rum, which I think is just a, a, a probably the most premier hunting cartridge. If you had one one ring to rule them all, you wanted to shoot moose, grizzly, deer, coyotes. That would be it. Yeah, um, but the, I had a 3378 Weatherby and I built that one first and then I got the rum and I realized that they were so close on the top end that I didn't need my 16 pound Weatherby because <laughs> right. I, I had a hunting, a hunting weight rifle out of the rum that uh, shot that giant elk and a couple of big deer and anyway, it's just been it's been a good learning situation going through all this stuff and, and playing with the different cartridges um, and seeing what they actually can do. And, you know, again, you can read a magazine, magazine says A, B, C, or D, you know, we see some of the, uh, gosh darn, I, saw, I read an article, just, I try not to read them anymore because I get irritated. This guy was comparing the 300 PRC, good cartridge, to a 300 Win Mag. And he's like, um, he took a, like the, the 230 grain bullet you're talking about, put it in the PRC and he put 150 grain um, core lock in the 300 wind mag. And he's trying to compare. No the two. Right. You know, it's yeah. like, it's like you, you you're going to compete for gas mileage and you put one in a Prius and one in a Hummer. It, yeah. You know, I, they but do it was that a dis, all the time. it's a dishonest comparison. You know, I think that there's a good place for new cartridges. I love innovation, but be honest in your reporting, right? Follow your fake news. <laughs> the, Those writers are the, fake news. The, the 300 PR far out shoots bullet for bullet weight than the, the 300 wind mag. It, it, it takes everything that was good with the 300 wind mag and improves upon it. Right. It's going to add and, about a hundred, hundred feet a second or so, you know, you and, got and like, you're not a belted magnum. and you're not a belted magnum, which is even better. Yeah. I I've never had a problem with the belts. Um, I shoot a lot of belted cartridges you know, for whatever reason, I, they don't bother me, but, um, the three, so 300 PRC will outperform a 300 run, uh, wind mag, but I'm just saying, make it accurate. If you're gonna if you're gonna shoot the sure. shoot the same bullet out of them, and you'll see there is a difference. It's not as major as the guy's trying to make in his report by you know just destroying the whole. That, like the 212 grain equal out of both cartridges, yeah. and see which one performs better. Yeah, exactly right. And then you know, there will be a difference. It is faster. 
Um, yeah. you're, you know, the other thing yeah. they did was they said, be, here's, here's what irri really irritated me about this was the guy said that the Sammy OAL on the 300 wind mag was so short that he had to, he had to compress the load. It's like, well, ding dong. If you're shoot, it's yeah. Yeah. Just be well, honest. Part, just be yeah. honest. That was part of the 300 uh, PRC is the fact that you could load a longer bolt. So, well, you can load a longer bullet, but if you're making your own rifle, you can throw it however you want. That's true. Yeah, you know, and and if you're not shooting a detachable box magazine, then you don't have those you're restrictions not. either. Yeah. Yeah. So, like on my hunting guns, I think I have one or two that are detachable box magazines. They're long actions, but it's like the 65284. So it's really right. a shorter cartridge, but I use a longer bullet in it. So I use it out of a long action. So, I mean, there's just, there's things you can do to get the performance, but I just, again, again I just, it's a, it's a personal pet peeve of mine when guys are just. Oh, I know. Uh, I read those articles too. My, one of my instructors was just hot as hell over an article that was in one of the NRA magazines talking about trigger pull and how he thought that, that trigger pull was a myth, that it, you don't have to pull the trigger easy to take. And he was hot as hell. It took everything that he'd been doing his whole entire life and threw it in the toilet and it was bullshit. What in a um, magazine? What? That's almost as bad as uh, that kind of crap in a he, in, in a podcast. He, he was so upset over it. He replied to this guy through the magazine, like ten pages. Uh, this does this guy that works for you have a beard? No. Oh, that's oh. not Jim. the ponytail. No, no, oh, it's uh, all right. Yeah, he's he's been a firearms instructor for thirty years. So One is he talking about pistol, pistol yeah. or rifle shooting? Pistol. So I saw, I saw Rob Lethem do a demonstration that was pretty darned amazing. Yes. Um, talking about. I, I told you about that before. You just, you just hold the gun in the direction you want to shoot it and pull the trigger. That well, one. Well, actually what he did is he took the worst guy in our class, which wasn't me that day. Um, uh, and, and he had him holding on target. And he made the guys shoot one shot at a time. The guy was shooting really good. Okay. But he's just, right. he, he did his stance. He did his grip and he's making him crush the, the gun in his hand and then slowly right. squeeze. And then he says, take your finger out of the trigger guard, hold just like I showed you. And he's just hanging onto the gun. He took a three foot cleaning rod, put it in the trigger guard and had the guy hold and he slapped the, the cleaning rod, the gun fires. The guy shot the same size group. And so his point was that trigger pull in that kind of shooting, the defensive fast shooting that you have to do as a police okay. officer security is not important holding that gun on target. And every, if all your other fundamentals are there, right? that you can yes. it still pulls off if you have a weak grip and you slap it who knows you know it, it, so it, right. it was interesting that he he picked that one component of all the different things you do to shoot accurately and and said okay here's the one if you and, and his point was look my business is i have to shoot fast i'm a professional shooter i need to shoot three magazines in 11 and a half seconds right I can't do that accurately. Slow bang, slow bang, slow bang. No, I, and, and so he said that here's how the, here's how they do it is they just just crush the grip and 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 you know bring the shoulders forward and just just make their body a rock so that they can abuse the gun and make it do what it needs to do for that type of shooting. That's interesting. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Then you are correct. All right. So. <laughs> if you agree, you're correct. All right. Thank you, man. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. We'll talk soon. Buenos nachos. Yeah. Have a good